I've been invited to the Classic Car Auctions Autumn Sale for an auction preview of a whole catalogue full of lots, many no reserve, all going under the hammer this Saturday. Come join me for a nose around. I'm Johnny Smith, this is The Late Break Show. This is the Warwickshire Event Centre quite near Leamington Spa and I've come here for the autumn auction sale from Classic Car Auctions and this is that you'll be watching this on the first preview day Thursday Thursday the 28th I'm recording this a couple of days earlier Friday the 29th you can come on those days and look at the cars the sale day is Saturday Saturday the 30th you don't have to come in person you can register online just go to classiccarauctions.co.uk but I have to start all of this with these two cars. These two cars are fascinating. These two cars are from the same vendor actually, uh, but what I love about it is they are completely different in condition. That Carmen convertible Beetle 1303, very late Beetle actually, right hand drive, has two miles two miles on the clock it has never been on the road it's never really been outside and it's in the exact condition it's been extracted from where it sat all this time it's from a deceased estate and the owner had this as a trade in 911 it's been sat for something like 35 years outside it's a 1968 sportomatic okay so this there's a little dealership sticker in the back window which i'll show you and that is the dealer that the old chap who owned these cars he owns the dealership and amassed a load of different other cars but these are the two that are coming under the hammer so two miles from new supplied new by gem volkswagen of walsall in the west midlands it's one of the last right hand drive carmen convertibles and I've just crawled underneath and it is, it's got all the chalk marks on it. It's got all the numbers stamped on the back of the, even the, you know, the disc brake dust guards that normally just rot and disappear. It's still got the bright stampings on there. It's a phenomenal time warp, a really, really once in a lifetime chance to own a car like this, I would think. I can only imagine, oh my gosh, the fit and finish is just, this is, a, this is as good as it gets really for any aficionado of especially a late air called Volkswagen. So that has been cosseted and preserved and, and is a time capsule. As I said, this one's been outside for 35 years. 1968 911T Sportomatic. All right, this is almost certainly gonna be a full restoration project, but because it is a right-hand drive car, it's probably a ripe car to do either um, an OEM resto or I would have thought a resto mod project. It's, I've, uh, I mean, there's a shot of it in the garden where it was found here. 46,000 miles from new. One of my favorite Porsche colors, Bahama yellow with the black interior looks stunning. It was originally supplied to Scotland from new it's a matching numbers car. So the two litre flat six is, is matching numbers. It's going to have a quick look. Oh, I would love to be able to afford to buy this and restore it, but oh my goodness gracious me. And there it is. A hedge find, matching numbers, 911T, that needs everything, really. But it's worth it. Again, no reserve. Estimated 15 to 20K. Goodness me. Who's going to buy it? Are you? You could buy it. There's a lot of classic Fords here at classic car auctions. There always is, there's, there's Cosworths, there's lovely clean Capris. But I have to talk about this Granada Scorpio Cosworth 1991 car. These have been engine donors for other projects to put the drivetrain in Cortinas and Escorts for years. Quite an unloved car, yet a, yet a real Cosworth. I happen to really like them. This one here is fascinating. This one here has done 2,000 miles from new. It was only registered on the road in 2017. It spent most of its life in a Belfast University science department as a training vehicle. And I have to say, it looks flawless. It looks really, really amazing. I remember these when they were new and I think they're a really handsome beast. Now the estimate is 20 to 25 grand. I don't know if there's anyone out there that's going to buy one, but I suspect if you've got a collection of fast forwards, this would be one of those cars which you'd really struggle to find in such low mileage worship condition. 
Love it. It's a bit of me, this is. Now, the Volkswagen Carmen gear is, is not a new one on me. It's a coach-built body made by gear. Beautiful sort of evening dress body shell over. Just standard, relatively standard Beetle floor pan engine drivetrain. But this is a new one on me, this edition. It's called a sport edition. Apparently less than 300 were thought to have rolled off the production line. 1973 car, American import. It's been fully restored, painted by a body shop that I'm familiar with who do a hell of a job. I've just looked around it and it's absolutely gorgeous. And this unusual two-tone with this sort of go faster sport stripe around the back here. Estimate 20 to 25, satin yellow with the Lemmert style, MP Lemmert's reproduction wheels. I've got these wheels on my own Beetle. Rebuilt 1600 engine, blue printed. It's, the only difference from standard is the wood rim steering wheel, I think, and the twin carb setup. Now this thing is significant to me, and this has come of age now because the thing about the Saxos is they made two hot versions, the VTS, which is the top of the range car at the time, the 16 valver, and then they made the VTR, which is also in this sale. I'll come on to that in a minute. Yeah, the VTR. This one here is completely original. And I think when I used to work on Max Power and Revs magazine in the tuning, performance tuning days, late 90s, early 2000s, these were the hottest of hot property. I think when you bought them new, you got a year's free insurance. And that meant that so many people bought them on finance and started modifying them. Now is the time for those people, 20 something years later, they've got the money, they want to return to the old school and that nostalgic vibe is gonna get expensive. I said years ago that these are gonna suddenly go up like, in the same way that escorts, hot escorts have, have gone up and shot up in value, I think the Saxo will. So what is this? Lot 719. It's less than 40,000 miles from new, 37,000 miles. It's got a fully stamped um, service book. It's had a recent cam belt change. It's only got, let me think, it's only had two owners, I think. And that 1.6 16 valve engine, 120 horsepower. Matty behind the camera there remembers when these were new being really quick. 0 to 16, 8.7 seconds, 127 miles per hour, but they weighed nothing. So this one is a September 2002 car. It's hit that 20 year mark, you see. As soon as cars hit 20 years, that's a nostalgic wave, that retro wave starts to pick up. It's got those original five spoke alloys and I've looked inside and I know it's dark in this building today, but the interior is really, really good. In fact, when I look down the side of it, I don't know if it's had any paint or bodywork. It's that good. Estimate 10 to 12 grand. But you know, finding these cars in this condition is gonna become more and more of a challenge, which is why I think the values are gonna to start to surge. So we've just seen the Saxo, and I said there's an AX GT over there. It's actually an AX GTI. So this was the top spec predecessor to the Saxo. And this particular car is extremely good. I mean, we've had a lot of, a lot of low mileage cars at the CCA um, autumn auction, this one. This car is another one. 15,967 miles, one previous owner. And the current owner of this car has done some amazing recommissioning and re restoration. They've restored the original body kit with a special kind of coating, which makes it have the, the same texture as what it would have had from the factory. And if you think it's clean on the outside, this black and white combo, you wanna have a look at it under there. It's unbelievable. It's been two pack painted in white underneath. It's had numerous new parts fitted in the engine bay. Engine bay is very clean and the suspension. Somebody has really, really gone to town on this. This is probably as good an example of an AX GT or GTI that you'll find. Estimate is 14 to 18 grand. It's just lovely to see one been looked after. You know, for a long time, these were cheap, probably a little bit throwaway back in the late 90s, early 2000s. But this is wonderful. What a great little warm hatch. That, now I've always liked this shape of, of Audi. I've actually had an early uh, coupe GT, but this one is interesting because it's a quattro, but it's non-turbo. So it's still got the five cylinder, 10 valve engine. And these are probably rarer than the turbos now, less desirable, you know, estimate 10 to 12 grand, 
But if it drives anything like my Coupe GT did, which was front wheel drive, it'll be just a fabulous car and the build quality is just uh, so good. This particular car has done a lot of miles, 141,000. And that's because they're so drivable with the 2226cc two, KV engine. Just gonna have a look inside because the interiors are really difficult to get bits for. And that looks really good. There's like a weave, a brown weave. And that amazing graphic layout of the Quattro all wheel drive system. Now, this is interesting, lot 846, Golf Mark IV, of which there's still loads around. They're not exactly rare cars, but this is a really high spec model. V6, four motion, manual. So when this came out in 1997, and this is a 2002 car, you know, this thing was a proper sort of gentleman's express, a real, a real luxurious, fast Golf. I'm just looking at the specs here. It was 204 horsepower, could do 60 in 6.9 seconds, could do 150 miles an hour. This particular version's on 87,000 miles. It's got a stamp service book, full history. It's just had a, uh, the long MOT done, regassed aircon, new battery, and a couple of other bits and bobs. Again, no reserve, but you could get this for about 3,000, 4,000 quid. I know they're really well made. Mark IV Golf's one of my brother's favorites. It's cool, isn't it? A couple of years ago, the Land Rover Discovery turned 30, and I think ever since then, you need to keep watching on the prices. But the reason why I wanted to show you this particular example, because it's probably the coolest spec of the early ones, two door and V8. And yes, a little bit tatty around the edges, but no reserve. Estimated at six to eight grand, that might be ambitious, I don't know, but it's hard to find these now because they've all been chopped up and used to death. I think it's cool. D-Reg Capri 280 Brooklands. Do you know what that means? That means they couldn't sell them at the time. That is the last of the Capris. Now, one of the most desirable. A few 90s SLs in this auction, but there's only one, and there's only one apparently in the whole of the UK in this color. And it's this car, Lot 824. Really low mileage in the Designo light green, 024. Similar color to my Honda Insight. Looks awesome. Lot 828, early Golf GTI Mark II. How do I know it's early? B-Reg, little GTI badge down there, quarter lights and the red stripe interior, just like the Mark I. That's neat, Pirelli P's. Whilst I'm still bringing lots of other cars in and it's filling up, I wanted to, to, to look at this. There's a couple of, of 80s boxy Rolls Royces and Bentleys here. This one, 9999FD is particularly significant. FD standing for Felix Dennis. If you've enjoyed uh, reading magazines over the years and you've heard of Dennis Publishing, he was the founder of Dennis Publishing. A real visionary of a guy, very interesting guy. And this was his personal car. Purchased new by him, by the billionaire publisher Felix Dennis, and, and then until 2015 when his chauffeur bought the car from the estate because Felix passed away. The original massive service history has sadly been lost, but there are many, many other notes detailing where this car has been and what it's done. It's done a huge amount of miles, 223,700 miles, but you know that he probably had so many little creative thoughts, meetings, parties involving this car. And Felix, I never met him, but I know a lot of people who worked for him and around him, and they said he was a real, a real dude. God, that's heavy. That's so heavy. I forgot how much these big boxes weigh. Yeah, estimate. Estimate 6,000 to 8,000 8, pounds with no reserve. Goodness me. This little rare Groover, don't see these very often at all, certainly not in the UK. And this car wasn't from the UK originally, lot 728. 1968 Fiat 124 Sport Coupe. It's from South Africa which probably explains why it's very, very rot free. And it's this beautiful green color. It's got the twin cam engine in it, a 1.4 little twin cam, but it's still 96 horsepower. I know someone like Gordon Murray would like a car like this. It's very dainty, it's not too big. And the condition of this particular, I've been, I've been looking around it and it's really, really nice. So what do we know? It's only done 17,000 miles or kilometers. Wow, that's impressive. This shade of Fiat dark green is what it came with originally, code 388 with tan leatherette interior. Again, the condition of the interior, 
is absolutely superb. See, I'm looking at this going, estimate of 10 to 12,000 pounds. To me, this seems really good value. I mean, from every angle, those pop-out windows, loads of glass, thin pillars. Just look at it. It's a great little thing. Wood grain dash, those little bucket seats. It's a really, really nice little car, that. And again, it's, there's so few of them about. It's so unique. If you watch the Late Break show a lot, which I hope you do, you know I'm partial to a barn find. I don't have the barn find fleece on, and I didn't pull this car out, sadly. But what's interesting about this Mark II Jag is the following. It's a 3.8 manual, which makes it more desirable, but it's a one previous owner showing 15,000 miles from new. Goodness gracious me, hubcaps are sitting there on the passenger seat. It's been pulled out from where it's been sat. Let's see what it says. So UK supplied and registered, 1967. Purchased by its current owner in 1979. So one previous owner car. And it's been in storage, dry storage, since 89. They're just maneuvering this lot, 809, into place. Type 25. So we all know VW Transporters, all the buses are popular, hashtag van life. But what's amazing about this one is it's done 18,000 miles from new. And it's the Caravelle. I love the Caravelle, so the original sort of people carrier. This one's just so virgin. I had a look around it and it's got the oblong lights, which I prefer to the circulars. What else can I tell you? So it's got the 2.1 water-cooled heads, flat four boxer with 95 horsepower. Beautiful interior, it really is immaculate. Now there is, a, there is a reserve for it, but it's estimated 15 to 18 grand, which seems like a lot of money, but compared to all the earlier buses, the bay windows and the splits, it's actually really good. You rust protect that and you use it, look after it, I think it's a safe bet, because those are so much more enjoyable to drive on the motorway down to the West Country than a split screen, trust me, as someone that's owned them all. These two together, very, very different bedfellows. We'll talk about the military spec top plus G-Wagon in a minute. I want to talk about this gleaming black Fiat Ritmo. We knew it in the UK as the Fiat Strada. This is obviously a left-hand drive imported car from, uh, I think it's Italy, yep, called the Ritmo. And this is the 105 TC, TC standing for twin carb. The Arbath was the 130, but in whatever guise, they are rare now and they are possibly one of the coolest hot hatches. I know a guy who I did a previous car cave on who has a 130R bath. He said it's still hands down the best 80s hot hatch he's ever owned. And he's owned Renault 5 turbos, 205 GTIs. He still thinks these are absolutely pin sharp and a lot of fun. This particular example then, uh, 81,000 miles. This is from a private collection. Uh, the 105 TC like this, available only as a three-door. And it's got the coolest door handles, I think, of any car of this era. I remember as a kid being absolutely transfixed by the circular door handles. It's weird what you remember. And then inside, black and red, kind of herringbone check with this fantastic Arbath steering wheel. And you have to look at the gear knob. I don't know how I would describe it, just, just look at it, just look at it. So let's go from 80s hot hatch to 80s military vehicle. This is an unusual G-Wagon. You can see no roll bars, no back whatsoever, no cab whatsoever. And that's because, according to this, lot uh, 758, this is a 1987 Mercedes G, Jeep X Singapore military checkpoint vehicle with 7,000 kilometers on the clock. That is so young in terms of time. 2.4 diesel, four wheel drive, of course, with a manual box with low, low range. Yeah, that little knob down there, there's your low range. In a world where early Land Rovers and early Land Rover prices have been surging and surging and surging, this is a bit more me. I know these are more expensive to look after, but I think they're also better made. And this is the best kind of G-Wagon for me, the really simple G-Wagon. I don't know, I don't know the way you'd use it with all its Spartan glory, but it's cool, isn't it? What's it up for? Estimate, estimated 15 to 18, no, estimated, yeah, 15 to 18 grand, but that mileage, and it's supplied uh, UK registered, and it will come with a fresh MOT when sold.
I'm not a number. Seems to be a bit of a pattern emerging in this auction. There's loads of one owner or one previous owner cars with exceptionally low mileage. Well, this has done 62,000 miles, which is not exceptionally low, but it is this 1990 Audi B3 Coupe 20 valve Quattro. I love. So although I love the B2, the boxy Ur Quattro as was, when these came out, they were so modern, so clean with those recessed door handles and very aerodynamic. But this particular car is cool. Why? Because it is a one owner car. Purchased in 1990 for 27,000 quid and it has an incredible amount of service history attached to it. And I think 12 to 18 grand, when you consider that the boxy previous Quattros now, this spec 20 valve turbo are now what, 70, 80,000 pounds? This is starting with a one in front of it. That's pretty good value. Frameless doors. Bloody hell, it's really good in there. It's really good. This room is full of temptation, I'm sure you'll agree. We couldn't cover all the lots in this video, but hopefully it's given you a bit of a taste of what's coming up on Saturday the 30th, when the hammer starts hitting. But today, Thursday the 28th, is viewing day. Tomorrow, Friday the 29th, is also viewing day. You don't have to be here in person. You can register online. Uh, go to the description below. There's the website, classiccarauctions.co.uk. I need to leave now because there's cars like this, which I've really, and cars like that, goodness me. Anyway, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and thank you for watching. Cheers.